classic 80s metal. Symphonic death metal opera. But I've got to be in the mood to listen to Black Sabbath. Many of our listeners weren't even born then. Back for time, it was very progressive. I can see there are thrash elements. You are a metal paradox. A stunning vision of death metal. I would listen to it over and over and over again today. It just seems so dated. I hear this more as operatic as goth. Lori Anson will surpass Halpert as the iconic heavy metal singer. You're listening to The Great Metal Debate Podcast. Right, man. Well, I just can't refrain from noting several bands who are deserving of recognition. I want to put on my honorable mention list. Any of these could justifiably be listed as the top albums of the year. Some of those that didn't make my top ten were The Satanist by Behemoth, Slaves of the Sword from Ex Mortis, Shadows of the Dying Sun by Insomnium, High Priestess by Cobra and the Lotus. Uh-huh. Angels of the Apocalypse from Timo Tolki's Avalon, Hollow's album Mordrake, Omnipresent by Origin. You got to talk to Jason Kaiser, man. Yeah, it was a highlight show and a highlight uh, interview for me. Once More Around the Sun by Mastodon. I got to see them for the very first time this year. Uh-huh. And then three albums that each of them really deserves to be in the top ten. Delivering the Black by Primal Fear. Great album. Heroes from Sabaton. Yeah. And A War of Our Own by Stream of Passion. That's a monster. Ten. Starting off at number ten, I have The Human Contradiction from Delane. Following on We Are the Others, Delane rebounded in 2014 with a heavier, meatier, and even more powerful album with The Human Contradiction. The band's done a masterful job of crafting a record that provides all the classic Delane gothic melancholy magic. Charlotte's vocals shine, Timo's guitars are as strong as ever, and Martine's keys pull it all together. The album features the return of Marco Hitala singing on several tracks, plus harsh vocals by arch enemies Elisa White Gloves on the final song, Tragedy of the Commons, a top ten worthy effort. Nine. Iced Earth returned in 2014 with my number nine pick, Plagues of Babylon. Although perhaps not as strong as Dystopia, their first offering was Stu Block, Plagues nonetheless provides the solid riffing, song structure, and the vocals Iced Earth fans expect. Stu continues with his superb vocal delivery, and the rest of the band maintains that trademark Iced Earth sound. Another impressive product from a legendary band. I cannot believe this, but on the first two that you've picked, I think I'm kind of there with you, man. I loved Plagues of Babylon. I thought it was a great album. I actually liked it better than Dystopia. Eight. The eighth best album of 2014 is Redeemer of Souls by Judas Priest. After 2009's symphonic concept album, Nostradamus, Priest have returned with their first release since the departure of co-founder K.K. Downing. Redeemer brings a lot of great Priest hallmarks, including classic metal riffs and even bluesy sounds following the path explored in the song Revolution off Angel of Retribution. New axe man Richie Faulkner fills Downing's shoes ably bringing his own style and technique to the priest camp without misstep. Overall, Redeemer is a solid offering. I might have had this album rated higher, Brian, except for your argument that this represents a return to some bygone 80s ideal for Judas Priest. Merely the suggestion that this might be some throwback to that overblown era of pompous, anti-intellectual arena rock merits Redeemer being pushed back several spots on my list. God, you are a f***ing idiot. I can't believe that that's a reason why you would push that back. Listen, when Priest came out, and they started up with Dragonaut, which is the first uh, song off this album, which, by the way, is a return to their 80s traditional sound, and that's what makes it worthy of a top ten, when that happened, I was transported back to the golden age of metal, the time when metal was metal, and it wasn't a bunch of fatty high register singers who think that metal is somehow related to a bygone scene, tradition of opera. After your strong case there, maybe push them back behind Delane and Ice Third. Seven. For number seven, I select Goat Whore's newest offering, Constricting Rage of the Merciless, a brutal helping of black and death metal, 
constricting rage has the GOTOR crew returning with a fury. Classic tracks like FBS give the listener everything they want, with perhaps even more lyrical simplicity than on earlier albums. If you enjoy metal at the crossroads of black, thrash, and death, this album is ideal listening. Six. Surprisingly, one of only two Canadian metal bands with albums to make my top ten. At number six, I have Beyond Creation with Earthborn Evolution. While not the shock that was its predecessor, The Aura, Earthborn Evolution again brings Beyond Creation, producing an amazing amalgam of progressive melodic death metal. Songs like Neurological Transmissions, Elusive Reverence, and Theatrical Delirium propel the listener on an atmospheric ride. The musicianship is stunningly technical, but unforced, successfully layering a range of progressive textures amid the crunching guitars and blast beats. This is the next step in the evolution of metal. You know, this is one of those albums that uh, the intricacy, kind of the talent, are obvious. The passion was apparent in concert. And then also, I got to interview Simon, uh, Simon Gerard, the lead singer and lead guitar player, and his passion was obvious. And then, of course, during the show, their talent was obvious. And they played several songs off uh, this album. They were not a disappointment. Uh, it's a solid selection from you. And before the show, we saw where the bass player gets his inspiration. We did, as a matter of fact. And that inspiration smelled extremely strong, sweet, and good. Five. For album number five, I pick Antagonize by Mayan. Those who know Mark Jansen's work from After Forever and Epica recognize him for what he is, a metal genius. Mark doesn't disappoint with Antagonize, an even heavier follow-up to Mayan's first release, Quarter Past. Antagonize has all the surging guitars, epic symphonies, and of course, the three-headed monster of clean, harsh, and operatic vocals. This time, the classical singing includes Marcella Bovio, in addition to past Mayan crooners Flor Jansen, Simone Simmons, and Laura Macri. A must-have for any fan of symphonic death metal. Four. The other Canadian metal band on my list appears with its debut full-length album and my number four choice for 2014, Empire, from Montreal metalers Car Chaos. Having heard and really liked their EP, I still wasn't prepared for how great Empire is. Strong riffs and melodies, powerful orchestration, and solid strong structures. I can't say enough good things about this album. There's literally no album I've played more times this year than Empire, and it doesn't get old. A huge, pleasant surprise. Sadly, Carcaeus has chosen to part ways with Veronica O. Rodriguez, the vocalist and lyricist for this amazing album. Whatever direction the band goes in the future, they will be hard-pressed to better this incredible initial offering. Listen, I'll, I'll tell you honestly that Carcaeus is sort of a band whose style that I grew into. They were one of my first introductions to melodic death metal, if you will. It's kind of odd for me because, you know, we've talked to this band, and so, you know, when the singer leaves, it's almost like a divorce. You know, you love both sides, and you want them both to do well. I'm anxious to hear the new offering from Car Chaos, and I'm anxious to hear the new singer, and I'm anxious to see what Veronica comes up with. Three. After what some considered a disappointment in Requiem for the Indifferent, Epica has returned in 2014 with my number three album for the year, The Quantum Enigma. Mark Jansen has crafted an album that is tighter and less disjointed than some of its predecessors. This album has brilliant compositions such as The Second Stone, Victims of Contingency, Unchained Utopia, and The Essence of Silence. The overall orchestration is superb, with a mix of guitars, growls, keyboards, soprano, strings, drums, and choirs coming together in masterful fashion. The instrumentation is majestic, and the classic contrast between Jensen's growls and Simmons' soaring voice have never been better. This is what symphonic death metal opera should be. Oh, God. I I'm embarrassed for you with this pick, dude. This is a typical sort of choir-slash-synth-driven music that's virtually indistinguishable from any other symphonic metal band. I thought you loved choirs. I Yeah, choirs... We can pull that audio up where you talk about your love for choirs. No, I love the chorus of voices that sound like a choir as long as the choir is not the dominant part of the song. 
This is so mellow and tranquil. I'd use this to put a baby to sleep, not to get them head banging. I think this is your one of your worst picks. Two. With a metal pedigree unsurpassed, and now sporting arguably the coolest front person in all of metal, Arch Enemy wows with her latest offering, the number two album on my list for 2014, War Eternal. From the opening salvo of Never Forgive, Never Forget, Arch Enemy unleashes a barrage of new metal tracks that will soon become classics. You Will Know My Name, As the Pages Burn, and the title track all wow the listener. Michael and Elise's splitting of the lyrical duties brings both a sense of continuity and freshness. And for those who feared clean vocals would be in the deal, none are to be found, and Elisa more than takes up the torch path by quintessential death growler Angela Gasso. This is an album that doesn't disappoint, returning Arch Enemy to their rightful place as one of the genre-defining melodic death metal bands. One. Finally, we reach the masterwork of the year. My number one selection for 2014, Xandria's Sacrificium. After many decades, changes in front persons, and a variety of musical incarnations, Marco Hoibaum has finally found that magic formula. In Sacrificium, Xandria has merged the strongest traditional European power metal with the best symphonic sounds that Nightwish ever had to offer and capped it with vocals of unrivaled power. The album begins with the magnum opus title track, clocking in at over 10 minutes and continues to astound until the closing notes of Sweet Atonement. Diane Van Heersbergen's vocal prowess is beyond belief. She is now established as one of the premier singers in all of metal. This is an album with an amazing diversity. Classical sounds, symphonic touches, folk influences, and then you have a song like Betrayer that would have been at home on the new Judas Priest album. This was my hands-down choice for the number one album, A True Jewel in the Crown. There have been many great albums this year, but Sacrificium is a transcendent offering that will go down as one of the best metal albums of the decade. 